Learning Japanese can be difficult, especially if you're learning it from home. But now that I've been self-studying for a while, it's a lot easier. So today, I've decided to share what I would do if I started over, and some of the best resources I found so you can learn Japanese from home. You've probably heard it before, but first, I'd start by learning hiragana and katakana, Japan's two most basic alphabets. While hiragana is used in Japanese grammar, katakana is used for any foreign words, like ice cream or ice cream. So no, you can't learn without them. Believe me, I've tried. I recommend looking at one of the many hiragana and katakana charts available on Google. This will give you a sense of what sound each character makes, as well as how to actually write them. Watching a YouTube video on their pronunciation can also help. Now, actually memorizing them is the first hurdle for new learners. I like to use Quizlet flashcards, and I would go through 5 to 10 at a time, writing and saying them as I went. Do this until you feel fairly comfortable, but don't feel the need to know them perfectly. I spent way too much time on this when I easily could have moved on. You'll literally be practicing these with everything you do, so just keep a kana chart ready in case you forget one. Okay, now that you know hiragana and katakana, it's time to learn your first pieces of grammar and vocabulary. But where should you actually do this? I remember aimlessly searching Google for grammar, and to be honest, I found that using a textbook just works best for me. The Genki textbooks are by far the most popular, and they're probably what I'd recommend for new learners, but I actually use a textbook called Nakama. While uncomfortable at first, once I got used to the structure, I found it so much easier to learn grammar with the consistent format. A textbook might provide most of the vocabulary you need, but you're gonna need to do a little more to memorize it. Anki flashcards are praised by language learners as a fantastic resource to learn vocabulary, but maybe I'm a little different, because once again, I prefer using Quizlet. Not only does Quizlet have flashcards, but it has this write mode that I really like for learning vocab. I promise this video is not sponsored. You can also find pre-made sets of vocabulary on both Quizlet and Donkey, and I found these really helpful when I was starting off. They're a great resource to help supplement whatever you're learning in your textbook if you want to move a little faster. The next two things I talk about you should start as soon as possible after learning some entry-level grammar. The first is kanji, everyone's favorite. For those who don't know, kanji is the third alphabet in Japanese, and not only are there a lot, but they make hiragana and katakana look like a walk in the park. People say kanji is why Japanese is so difficult to learn, but it's actually my favorite thing to study. I like to put on some lo-fi, grab my brush pen, and relax as I go through some kanji. Now, I used to learn kanji individually, learning their readings and then matching them with words, but after posting this video, I was quickly advised that this is not the correct way to learn kanji. I would recommend learning the kanji for vocabulary you already know in hiragana. This is a natural way to do it, and it'll make them easier to remember. To learn kanji, the website Wani Kani is one of the most popular, and I use jisho.org a lot because it shows the stroke order of each kanji as well as the readings. But once again, I mostly use Quizlet flashcards. Okay, the last thing you'll need to do is immersion. That's things like reading, speaking, and listening to things in Japanese. While you can technically learn everything from textbooks, it's not very functional without practice, and this is something I realized kind of late. Immersion is the most important part of learning any language. As far as listening goes, I really like podcasts, and I recently found one called Let's Talk in Japanese. It's essentially just someone talking about random subjects at specific levels of Japanese. Watching TV shows is also great, and you can even start with children's shows to make it easier. Just don't watch with subtitles, this totally defeats the purpose. I know a lot of people don't like to read, even in their native language, but for me, it really helps build my familiarity with grammar, while podcasts and TV shows help more with vocabulary. The website Taroku has a massive selection of books, and they're for all levels of Japanese, and I mean all levels. Then they're speaking. This is particularly difficult if you're learning from home, and especially difficult if you don't like talking to strangers on the internet. Understandable. But unfortunately, there's no real way to get around this. All you can do is find a community that's supportive and that you feel comfortable speaking in. One I found early on was the app Hello Talk, which essentially connects people learning each other's languages. It's kind of like a social media. But recently, I found a Discord that I like a lot more. It's specifically for English and Japanese language learners, so it's a lot of people who are in the exact same situation I am in. They have things like a reading circle, where not only can you practice speaking, but you can also practice reading. And with that, you're on your way to learning Japanese. Some of these tips took me a long time to figure out, so I really hope you find them useful. If you do, consider liking and subscribing so you can join me on my own self-study journey.